Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Now, I've been asked for a little bit more variety around some of the showcases that I put on uh, put onto the channel. So I've decided to just show you how you can use, utilize Power BI in many different ways and talk about talk through different scenarios and how to run calculations in different scenarios. One really interesting thing though to note, uh, and I, I, I have always said this in the past, is that the calculator, no matter what the data, no matter what uh, type of data or, or model that you ultimately need to create, so many of the calculations and techniques, they're all the same. They're all the same, and, and that is one of the, the great things about Power BI. So you know, even though in some of my examples I talk a lot about sales or profits or profit margins, well, those can be replicated in many different ways. And in this particular example, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a banking example. I'm going to take a banking example or a banking report. This is actually a showcase uh, report that um, I'll leave a link below into the description. It's one of the Enterprise DNA showcases, so you can actually have a look and have a play with this yourself. Um, a play, only with the uh, only you can look at it online. Sorry, um, if you do want to actually sort of see the back end and see exactly how it's developed, then you do uh, you can access it with Enterprise DNA membership. So you can view it and play around with it at the showcase. But if you do want to actually see how it's all put together, etc., then you can access that with membership. But I want to show you a few things here, and and you might and depending on where you're at in terms of your Power BI. Um, journey you might think this is difficult or you might think this is very very easy but I, I guess what I wanted to show here is just the variety of work that you can do with Power BI and how good it is inside of Power BI you know from a visualization perspective so what we've got here I've just this is just some banking data and, and I used to work um, in financial services within a bank and um, am relatively familiar with you know the information and the way you got to think about banking data but obviously banking systems are going to be very different to the data I've got here but you know you might want similar sort of um, analysis uh, you know, depending on where you're working in the bank there's obviously lots of areas in within within our bank but basically here we're we're looking at core banking you know, requirements sort of like deposits loans credit cards etc etc and so what I wanted to do was I yeah, I've got a bit of a breakdown in this particular example of commercial institutional private bank retail but within that um, you know we, we can look at region we can look at particular regions this is a New Zealand based example it's just demo demo data um, you know, we can look at various different regions in New Zealand and click through, etc. Um, but we also want to be looking at individual, you know, things that matter, thing, you know, calculations that actually matter, and that's what we, you know, we've got our client amount of clients. Um, we've got something called the float here, and that's basically the calculation that I want to focus on. It's like how do you actually calculate the float? Now, the f what what the float is. And this can be termed a few things, but um, how I'm describing it here is just deposits minus your loans. Because um, sometimes the float can be positive, sometimes it can be negative. Most, a lot of the time, it's actually negative because you go and um, you go and borrow offshore to make up the difference between how much you've loaned out and how much you've got on deposit. Um, you know, but that again totally depends what type of bank you are. Um, but in this case, I want to show you well, how do you actually calculate this result, and you'll see, okay, well, how, how does it all come together? How can you, you know, create measures inside of Power BI, branch them out to then ultimately get this calculation? Okay, so let's quickly review the data. It's a pretty detailed um, you know, data set that I have um, for this particular bank, right? And so we have, let's just, you've got to think, okay, well, a bank's got customers, right? How do they make money? They have customers who give them deposits and they lend out money as loans, right? And so uh, it's, yeah, this is relative, this is simplified because loans can be to totally different people than, you know, say just general retail customers. But uh, in this particular case, it's, it's just, you know, to simplify things, it's all in one table. So we've got the customer name, a bit of detail about the customer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we've got, you know, so you know, we've even got stuff like last contact, last meeting. You know, some of the, a lot of this stuff would be in CRM systems within banks. Um, whether it would be all in the same table is, is debatable, especially with some of the legacy banking uh, technology out there. But um, for every single customer, right, you might have um, information about the customer. You might have their income. You might have how much superannuation they have, how many credit cards they have. But then also you might have things like, well, what sort of bank loans do they have, uh, bank deposits, checking accounts, savings accounts, foreign currency accounts, business lending so on and so forth in this particular example all of these things are in particular column like one individual column right and i'm sure when you doubt if you downloaded data 
um, you know, banking data in your own system, the data would be set up in some sort of way like this. And that's that's what it comes when it comes back to for me is that so much of the techniques I'm going to utilize, I'm going to show you in a second. I mean, they, they can be so easily replicated within any environment, especially finance. You know, in this particular case, financials or or in banking, right? And so what I've got here, we've got we've obviously got all the information that we need to go and run these calculations, and so we could create analysis like how how many. Um, loans, uh, you know, how many uh, customers do we have who have a you know, particular set of loans greater than X amount? How many um, bank deposits are, um, yeah, are with males or what are our deposits for people aged over a certain age? You know, so there's lots of different ways we can slice and dice it. What I've got here also though is I've got say location data so we can you see here we've got a unique identifier which which links back to that table and we've also got customer data so this is how we can uh, see what location they're in um, and know a bit more information about the client and that's what this model this how that's how this model has been has been um, created back here Okay, so let's run through the uh, just quickly run through some of the measures because I think you're going to find these are pretty pretty darn simple. So because our information is in uh, columns, right? All we have to do we don't need to do anything difficult. All we need to do is create some simple aggregation formulas and go sum. Uh, if we wanted to go and have a look at what our loan was, we just go sum. If we just wanted to look at biz lending, then we just need to go sum. So. I mean, most of you are going to think, well, this is this is ridiculously easy. Well, it is, and and, and you know, the, when and that's what I always say when people ask me for lots of different examples. It's like, okay, I can, I can very easily show you them, but what you'll find is that they're all very similar techniques that I show all the time, um, because they're um, you know, the techniques and tips and stuff. They're very replicable across many different environments, many different scenarios, which is which is what I, um, which is what's um, you know I love about Power BI. Now, total float, how do we go back to total float? So we've done all these intermediary calculations, right? I like to call them core calculations. Well, this is where we can use measure branching, the measure branching technique, where we can utilize measures within measures, right? Because all we know all of the deposits that we might have at the bank, but we also will know all of the loans because the data is in, is in our table. And so for us to calculate the total float, all we need to do is go total deposits, take uh, minus total loans. And so if I just dive into these particular formulas here, so let's have a look at total total deposits. So all I've done is I've taken all of these core calculations, which are deemed deposits, and I, I love to put them in like a very intuitive format where I start really simple, right? I start with this simple core measure, then now I'm branching out into total deposits. And then ultimately, if I wanted to go to total float, then I can just branch out again and go total deposits minus total loans. And this is a f the, f the by far the most superior way to actually create the sort of analysis in a, in a sequential way. Start simple and build up. And then because we've done that, we can then start filtering and, and, and looking at our information in a variety of different ways. And so what I've got here is within that table, and this is a really interesting one, you might have a risk weighting. You might have a risk weighting for a particular client. Um, and so what, what we can do here is we can say, okay, well, um, CR5s, these are our highest risk clients, right? And so um, we're able to click on that and see spatially, okay, well, here are our very high risk clients. Um, and then um, you see all the information that is going into that particular, um, that particular client and that particular location, et cetera. So it's, 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 it's great stuff, right? Really great analysis, just just showing in a slightly different way. Now, as I, as I say, you can actually have a play around this this actual showcase, this actual resource that I created. It's got a bit of detail about clients, um, and then we've got, um, sorry, I'm just clicking through there, a bit of a breakdown around uh, different uh, banking uh areas within a bank so we've got retail commercial institutional usually these will be in different divisions within banks and you might want to break out certain things like you know look at your deposit book look at your lending book um, look at your fees look at your margins for for um, for your clients etc so this is what this particular um, part of the, the the showcase also um, goes into and so, and look, and, and the great thing is like none of this is like super duper difficult. Um, it's just having a sound understanding of how to put a Power BI model and report together. And, and hopefully, I've sh just by the example I've shown you, it's all it's all very achievable stuff, right? And a lot of the techniques I've you know, showcased many times before. Um, so hopefully, just seeing it within this new sort of context, um, you know, can can um, 
yep, you, you can also see, you can also see that. Okay, I'm going to round things off. As I mentioned, you can have a look at this one on the showcase, so I'll put a link below to the showcase so you can navigate there. Um, and if you do want to actually, you know, if you actually want to download the resource, um, you can via, you know, with, with the Enterprise DNA membership, you can download any of those showcase resources and, and have a play around and see how they're done and replicate them and copy them, etc. So that's what that's what um, that's what members are, are able to access right now. Okay, all the best. Uh, hopefully you like this one. Hopefully you like you know, different application of Power BI. I love you know, banking as my personal background um, and, and we're, we're sort of learned a lot about sort of financial side of things. So really enjoy you know, showcasing what Power BI can do in that environment as well. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Looking forward to putting out a you know, whole variety of this sort of content in the future. So I uh, look forward to getting it to you. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon.